What's up, geeks and gamers? It is I, your humble lore master, Chris, with a dagger. Today, we are going to discuss a character that is very well known throughout the D&D world. Picture the most vile, most evil, most despicable, horrible monster in all of history. And he probably worked for this guy. I'm talking, of course, about Vecna. But before we go any further, here's a quick look at how you can help support the Geeks and Gamers tabletop community. Please consider supporting our mission to bring guilt-free gaming to the tabletop community by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and possibly even becoming a channel member for access to exclusive videos, Geeks and Gamers tabletop emojis, and more. If you found this video particularly helpful, please consider leaving us a tip using the Super Thanks feature located next to the like buttons at the bottom of the video. Before a very overrated Netflix series decided to appropriate this villain for their own purposes, there was Vecna, a villain known throughout the cosmos as one of the most darkest, twisted, evil people in all of existence. In fact, he literally wrote the book on it. The Eye, the Hand, and the Book of Vile Darkness. These artifacts have one crucial thing in common. They can trace their origin back to one owner. An owner so beyond the pale of wickedness that entire worlds fear the very sound of his name. In an age long past, the bastard son of a hedge witch was taken from his mother and apprenticed by an order of wizards. This boy was known as Vecna, and the life of a lowly bootblack ill suited him. He devoted all of his efforts to mastering the arcane arts. In spite of his unfortunate circumstance, Vecna was not alone. People should always be careful of whom they mistreat or neglect. For if you cannot be kind to even the lowliest of creatures, rest assured, someone else will be. Someone who may prove to your ruin. A voice from beyond the mortal realm spoke to Vecna, offering encouragement to his studies. Moreover, this voice fostered the intense hatred he felt towards his masters. They have deprived you of your mother. They have forced you into servitude. Take your rightful place above them and slaughter any who stand in your way. Accounts vary as to whom the voice belonged to, perhaps the demon lord of death and decay himself, Orcus, or the god of dominion and murder, Bane. Maybe even something as simple as his own ambition personified. But it was nevertheless effective in its sinister purpose. Vecna rose through the ranks until he surpassed every member of the Order. With intense study, he mastered the dark arts, and once he had attained every drop of knowledge he could squeeze from his masters, they were discarded. He who was once their servant was now their destroyer. They were slaughtered to a man, and their labors lost to the mist of time. With nothing left for him at the Order, Vecna moved on to conquer new horizons. Not satisfied with O'Earth, he spread his evil to Greyhawk, where generations would come to know his brutal and thorough demonstrations of power. Excellent work, Vecna. But every wizard worth his salt keeps records of his knowledge. Should not you yourself publish such a book? A mind and heart as exquisitely black as your own deserves to be remembered by all. Every dark and twisted thought, every cruelty Vecna could imagine, he put to pen and recorded in what would later be known as the Book of Vile Darkness. This sinister tome would outlast his presence in the world by many centuries, passing through the hands of various tyrants and practitioners of the dark arts. But its author was still unsatisfied. New worlds still awaited his torturous rule, but the killer of all men, time, would eventually claim his youth and vitality. Naturally, committing the very crimes for which his mother was banished, Vecna turned to necromancy, to preserve his mind far beyond the limits of death. 
Using the very same knowledge he had attained from centuries of study, Vecna rose from the dead, truly earning his title as the Undying King. But what is a king without vassals? Over his innumerable generations of rule, Vecna acquired countless soldiers for his brutal and bloody conquests, but none so noteworthy as the fallen paladin known as Kos. So impressed was the Arch-Lich Vecna with this warrior that he became the Lich Lord's personal guard. A sword was commissioned by Vecna to serve as a symbol of office for his chief enforcer. But the king of the Rotted Tower should have been more careful in the sword's crafting. The spirit housed in the Sword of Kos would whisper to its wielder, It should be you ruling this empire. The fool Vecna has earned your trust. Teach him the folly of his ways. The words of the sword were too compelling to resist. Kos turned on his master. The battle was costly for both, but none so much as the Lich Lord Vecna. A stroke of the sword took Vecna's hand. A well-placed jab gouged out his eye. Maimed and humiliated, Vecna could rule no longer. And with Kos gone as well, the world could heal in their absence. Since his defeat, Vecna is reportedly wandering the Outer Plains in search for his missing hand and eye. Since then, Vecna has acquired enough power to ascend to godhood. It is not uncommon to find his faithful assembling in droves to usher in his return, an event the Sword of Kos hopes to prevent. Indeed, should either the hand or the eye of Vecna and the Sword of Kos somehow come into your possession, you may find yourself unwittingly drawn into an eons old conflict. Have a care. The most arrogant often find themselves in possession of such relics, and if Vecna himself could not control the darkness they wield, what, pray tell, makes you the exception? In closing, I will leave you with the Lich Lord's own introduction to the Book of Vile Darkness. This book I leave as a testament to my service to evil, and also as a guide to others who would follow my steps into the vile darkness. These contents exist to understand evil's myriad expressions, to learn from them and use them. And though I have embraced the darkness, I know my understanding of it is not yet complete. Therefore, I leave this book open to others to add to its lore with a goal of creating more, a more perfect understanding of what it means to serve evil, to wield its power. I have but one warning before I leave you to your awakening. Resist not the truths I and perhaps others record here. Open your mind and heart to the knowledge contained on these pages. Only then will you understand and receive the wisdom darkness can provide. Embrace the lore and spurn the light, and you too shall ever after walk in darkness. Vecna is a beast. He has a whole host of spells and nasty surprises for you and your adventurers. And you definitely, he's definitely, think, kind of, he's kind of like if Skeletor and maybe maybe Thanos had a baby or something. He's definitely all about being bad and evil. Skeletor and Cobra Commander, maybe. Gross, Thanos. <laughs> Anyhow, he has a baseline health of 272 with an AC of 18. So you're definitely going to be have, having to get close to 20s to hit him, even, even to touch him. One of the spells that he has, really nasty one by the name of Rotten Fate, does 96 points of damage as its baseline and I think if you end up dying from this you become his undead servant Flight of the Damned uh, 36 damage but it can also leave you with the frightened condition and even if you manage to kill him the, 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 the outside chance that you actually manage to kill him the real bummer is he can never actually truly be killed he can only be shut down for a few centuries like, the dungeon master will have to roll a d100 
and whatever the value is, that's how many years it takes for him to regenerate. Now the Book of Vile Darkness, along with the Hand and the Eye, both of which are artifacts that you can obtain, uh, really nasty uh, if, if any of your players want to use this. Um, first of all, uh, it takes intense study to use the Book of Vile Darkness. Uh, go figure, it's a book. You need to clock in at least 80 hours of time attuning to it. And mind you, it's really only going to work for someone of evil alignment. Like, if a good ca character tries to use it, they're going to end up taking damage from it. And eventually, if they're not careful, it'll just disappear on them. I mean, the book is like, the hell with this, I'm out. Dude, you don't need this goody two-shoes nonsense. Um, but if you do, if you are an evil character and you do manage to, you do manage to align to it or tune to it, um, maybe this won't bother you, but it will leave you disfigured. And you're pretty much at the mercy of the DM for that. He may decide you just pop out a pair of horns, or maybe you just become hideously gross and awful like the Emperor Palpatine. Uh, but it does come with its benefits. You gain knowledge of dark things. It increases an ability score by two points. Uh, you can use it to harm creatures, usually doing about 3d6 damage. However, a lot of that goes to yourself as well. You take 1d, 1D12. Another benefit though, you can control monsters. Uh, so they'll have to make like a charisma check and then you end up the dominate monster spell, uh, particularly if it's an evil monster. Um, but beware of one thing I did forget to mention. If you're not evil aligned, this thing will turn you evil. It, you'll be constantly battling with this thing. And if you're not careful, it, it'll swap you over, swap your evil alignment. Now, as for the hand, more or less the same kind of things with the book, but pretty much had to cut it off. And cut your own hand off and plop it on there, you know, to get the full benefits of it. Same thing goes for the eye. Pop that sucker out, slam the slam the Vecna eye in, and you're good to go. <laughs> the eye and the hand can be destroyed, but uh, the book it's a little more complicated. You see, the book was pretty much. It's like the, the it's like the linchpin of all evil in the universe. Uh, so really, the only way the book goes away is if all evil in all the universe finally goes away, the book will just flutter away to dust. But that does it for Vecna. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, before you go, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, check us out on Gilded. I'm Chris with a dagger, and I will see you in the next video.